video. All right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today I have Jania McKenzie, and we are talking about faith based businesses. She is a wife a mother, and most importantly, a daughter of the king. Jania has a fashion marketing degree and over 10 years in the fashion industry. She's a teacher by nature and gets excited about seeing growth in people she's poured into. With Jania's vast knowledge and experience in the fashion industry, paired with her love for God's word, it was only a matter of time before she recognized and gave in to the calling on her life. Jania is inspiring others to seek, share, and wear the word of God. Welcome to the podcast, Jania. Thank you, Jania. Jania, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Jania. Yes. As soon as you said, I was like, oop, but I didn't want to mess up. I'm so sorry, Jania. <laughs> and I hate getting people's names wrong. I apologize. I'm it's okay. Jania. Okay. How yeah. are you today, love? I'm doing well. I'm doing good. Yeah, you know, I'm excited yes. to be here. Awesome. I'm excited to have you. So I'd like to start off each conversation by asking, what is the dream for you? Um, honestly, the dream for me is to have the courage to keep dreaming. You know, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Because, because sometimes, um, you know, you dream and okay, you reach that dream and then what? Mm-hmm. you know you, you you've arrived right or yeah okay i'm cool or you have a dream and you fall short so then what you get discouraged or you may feel like you know you may fall into a rut and i just feel like being able to keep dreaming and to keep elevating and to keep pushing and notice and knowing that there is no ceiling is what the ultimate dream is because it's not about arriving at a particular destination or checking certain things off the list you know it's just being able to have the courage to keep pushing and keep going you know, through the next and the next and the next. Absolutely. So when did you realize the dream and how has it shifted over the years? Um, so that, that part, I've realized that at a young age and I learned that Mm -hmm. from my mom. My mom, um, always told me like, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. There's so many things as a kid, I wanted to do everything like any and everything. And she was one of those moms (laughs) who was like, okay, you're going to do this. You're going to dance. You're going to be an accountant to the stars. You're going to do hair. And you're going to do it. Like, (laughs) That was like what, Mama Tina. <laughs> yeah, she's like, whatever you want to do. And um, I remember <clears throat> even as a young child, so like my parents got divorced when I was five. So I've seen my mom struggle as a single mom. But when we moved, um, like my parents were in the military, so my dad was stationed in Kansas and they got divorced when I was five and we moved back to Baltimore where my mom is originally from is where I grew up. So I saw my mom, we went from living in my grandmother's house, I saw her get an apartment, then we got a townhouse. Mm-hmm. My mom purchased her first home. I saw her graduate college and all of this while raising me and my sister. Mm-hmm. So she has always shown that you keep dreaming. She dreamt to have her own place. She got an apartment. Then she dreamt for something bigger. She got something bigger. She dreamt for something even bigger and got something bigger. So that is something that she showed me, but she also always affirmed that to me. So I was never afraid to do whatever because at the end okay. of the day, I could come back home or if they tell me no. It is what it is. You know, getting through that is easier than dealing with the feeling of not even trying because you doubted yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I am here for it. Yes. So shout out to my mom. Shout out to moms. <laughs> and not only, you know, moms, but moms that pour into their children's dreams. Yeah. For sure. Um, Mama Tina was the same way. And it's so funny because, like, with all that I have going on, I people like, say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Beyonce mama yes ma'am yes ma'am um, but she has always poured into me um, chasing those dreams and you know giving me the freedom to figure it out I remember before I went off to college she was like never be afraid to change your major and yep. just that freedom I was like oh okay. okay and I had three majors my first year but then I found something I loved you know what I mean? And it's like having that ability to kind of like um, encourage your children to go after those dreams, encourage them to figure out what the dream is, Yeah, you know, and giving them that patience. Um, but what I was saying, like when I, you know, I do this and I do that and I do, and people are like, how do you have the time? And I'm like, I've been this busy since I was in high school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I, my senior year in high school, I did half a day in high school, half a day in college. I worked part-time. I did competitive cheerleading, which if 
anybody knows about competitive chilling. That is yeah, a life. That's crazy. Yeah. My cousin is a cheer coach and she, ooh, it's a lifestyle. And I'm coaching now too. So, <laughs> you know, to add that in. Um, I was involved in my church and then also graduated top 2% of my class. You know, all it, and it, I'm like, this has been my life. Mm-hmm. I can't even fathom what it looks like to just work and come home. Yeah. Yeah. I, now I, what? Never, yeah. That's, that's how I, it was when I graduated. I was like, so now what do I do? Like, I've never had that luxury. Like, I don't know what it means to just work. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you do? You know what I mean? Like, what do you do after? Yeah. Um, so I definitely can respect that for sure. So what would you say is your mission? And how did you know this was your purpose for your life? Um, so basically, um, and you know what? I just realized I didn't answer <clears throat> the second part to the question that you just said. You said, how did the dream change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, that's going to kind of go into the mission. Okay. So the dream has changed now is more so like my dreams are now um, whatever God's will is for my life, you know, because before I had different ideas of what what it meant to be successful, what it meant to be at whatever level or status. But now, um, since my journey back to Christ some years ago, now my dream is to focus on whatever is going to make him happy and all those other things will come, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, to I really recognize what the calling is on my life, and that is my only focus. Mm-hmm. You know, so with Fashion and Favor, <clears throat> which is my apparel and accessory brand, our mission is to really inspire others to do the same thing. We want you to seek the word, share the word, and make it fashion by wearing the word. Yes. Um, <laughs> but the re- how I knew it was for me is because so for one, you already talked about the experience that I have in in the fashion industry. So I know it's cliche, but like fashion truly is my passion. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it came about, like as far as the idea for it it was easy. You know, I mean, it it was easy. I didn't have to put a bunch of thought into it. I didn't have to be like, okay, so if I do this, like it was easy as far as the name, the idea behind it, even the very first design, like it all came easy, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, and I'm a firm believer in like when, when, when you have like a natural talent or something that you love to do lines up with building the kingdom of God, like that is how your purpose is birthed, you know? So it only made sense for me. I'm like, oh, okay, of course it's, it's about me, you know, growing up the kingdom through apparel. Like, hello, like this is what I do. Hello. And you know that's, what I'm saying? And that's the, the, the truth behind purpose is one of those realities of the things that come naturally to you is probably rooted in your purpose. Like, mm-hmm. but because they come naturally, we minimize its importance. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, like, I've always been a writer. Mm-hmm. I loved writing. It was how I vented. You know, I, I have my journal. All these other things. Mm-hmm. I, it didn't even dawn on me until 25 that my words could help somebody. Yep. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, people focus so hard. They're like, dang, what am I supposed to do? And what should I do with my life? And it's like, girl, you teach every day or you do this every day or, you know, you know, like you said, you write. Like, there's so many different things that we do for just pure enjoyment. And that is the gift that you have been blessed with, for you sure. know, for a bigger purpose. Yeah. Absolutely. So what struggles have you faced when you were starting out? And are you facing any currently? Like, how has that, that transition been? So when I first started, um, so like I I mentioned, my journey back to Christ, right? So, I mean, I wasn't out here like, okay, like I was in these streets a little bit, just a little bit. A little bit. (laughs) A little bit. A little bit. But, um, you know, it was just like, why me? What? People gonna be like, girl, what you mean? You was, I just partied with you last weekend or, you know, whatever. And my, my struggle was who was going to buy into it like who was going to believe that it was authentic like I didn't want to seem like a bandwagoner or I didn't want to seem like oh I'm just doing this because it's popular now like it was really really important for me um to hold myself accountable spiritually because of some of the things that I had overcome when this vision even came to me um so I had a bigger meaning besides just putting t-shirts out there you know what I'm saying um and I was just afraid of embarrassing God like making him look bad you know um so that was the biggest thing. And I still deal with that sometimes, um, but I've definitely gotten through it and learned that it's not about perfection. It's not about being this type of Christian or this type of, you know, he, he knows me. Okay. Mm-hmm. He knows me. He knows me and he loves me still. So, Absolutely. you know, that's something that you have to understand. You know what I mean? And that doesn't mean that um, 
you can only listen to this type of music or you have to go to church every Sunday, you know, and I had to learn like that is not what relationship is about. Right. Um, so religion that, versus relationship. Child, yes. Um, but now I think my biggest struggle is just staying focused on him mm -hmm. and not being um, distracted, like not looking to my left or my right to see what other people may be doing right. um, and trying to keep up because even though pe there are a lot of people that are in this niche, but everybody ain't necessarily doing it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, you know, keep my hope and stay steadfast in him to know that I need to do what he sees fit for fashion and favor and not doing what this brand is doing and what that brand. Is. Oh, well, now I'm gonna start selling these. And I'm, you know, I got, mm -hmm. so when I get like that, I have to reset, Bring it back. <laughs> shut that. Yeah. Yeah, I just went through that like a couple of days ago. So like right now, I haven't even like been on social media. Like I, I've been checking in here and there, but I haven't really been posting anything. I just had to like get myself back together, get in the word and stop looking at the world. Hello, comparison <laughs> is the thief of joy, okay? Yes, okay. Every, and it'll get you every single time. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sure. tell me, what's your favorite part about being in business? Um, well... I think my favorite part about being in business is the being able to pour into people like, uh, and because like, I truly am a teacher by nature. Like everything I do, I'm always trying to teach somebody or share what I know. So whether it's sharing like, um, knowledge as far as academics or sharing like the word of God or the joy of Jesus Christ, like I just get so excited to share that with people. And when I get like testimonials about how one small conversation, you know, help them to reconnect or, uh, buying their t-shirt and inspired them to pray or whatever the case may be like I truly 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 love that and I call my tribe my faves like my favorites uh, and they are truly my favorite part like hands down no doubt they keep me inspired they do like yes. every time I'm like feeling frustrated or struggle I'll get a message like like even just yesterday I got a response back I sent out an email about like the power of affirmation and stuff like that and i got a reply back the girl was like yes i needed this so much now mind you i'm going through whatever i'm going through like trying right. to make sure that i refill my cup yeah but god just always reminds me that he is with me at all times and I Absolutely. Just, mm. and what's funny is i um i definitely agree so i feel like i pour into people in a different kind of way right um but it's such a fulfilling feeling to be able to know that you inspired change, you inspired yep. improvement, you inspired somebody. And even when I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients, like being able to say like, like I had a, um, a client within three weeks of working together, she had already had four paid clients. I'm and okay. Like, that felt good for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To feel like I'm contributing to someone else's success feels Absolutely. phenomenal. Um, but I definitely also agree with you. Um, you mentioned how God gives you those reminders right when you need them. There are like being a full-time entrepreneur is so challenging. Like there are great days, there are bad days. Mm -hmm. There are days where you're just like, what's the point? Yeah. Like, why am I even here? <laughs> you know? Um, but on those days where you need that confirmation, it's like you get a sale in your life. Mm -hmm okay or that day where you get ready to give up um and i have a nonprofit, so you know even just getting an email saying hey we're gonna give you a donation for your nonprofit." like yes that's for yeah. the profit but it's a reminder like i got you yes yeah mm -hmm. um and that's less money i gotta pull out my pocket <laughs> mm -hmm. to fund the operations of the nonprofit. so you know it's just like it's, it's such a good feeling to feel like god didn't forget about you oh yeah for sure oh, yeah absolutely he'll provide all your needs okay uh, hello especially <laughs> when um when you're acting when you're moving out of faith so when i took the leap into entrepreneurship um i did it wholeheartedly believing that that was what god was telling me to do now whether he was actually telling me like whether i heard him correctly or not i feel like because i made that decision in pure faith he's covering me mm -hmm. He's make like month after there's some months where I'm like, mm, yeah. yeah, but that's, but that's really all you need. Like to obtain favor from the Lord. All you need is the faith that he will like, that's all you need. And he'll cover it. Every the faith time. of a mustard seed. Okay. Every that's time. It. Absolutely. So what are some things we can expect to see next from you? Well, so, hmm. Well, I'm going to be expanding the brand. So right now it's just apparel and accessories, but I really want to expand to like lifestyle products. 
Um, so I want to, once churches and stuff like that open back up, like I really want to create um, like something for like sermon notes um, mm -hmm. to be able to organize your thoughts. Cause I know for me, even if I'm listening to it on TV or I mean like on a computer or whatever, or even in physical church, my notebook, I'm like, my stuff is all over the place. So okay. you know, I, I definitely want to create something specific for that. Um, even just regular other lifestyle products, um, like art, you know, artwork and um, what do you call it? Wall art, things mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, I have a lot of things like in the works, but I just have to make sure that I'm doing what it's called for and not just right. what I want to do. So I'm yeah. saying that that's coming, but it might not we'll come. See. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It might be something but, completely different. Like, she told me she was going to come out with a sermon book. I mean, I thought I was, but... Because I'm going to be honest with you. I'm waiting <laughs> on that one. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a big... Again, I'm a writer, right? So for me, taking, like, physically taking notes helps me process it. Yes. I may not ever go look at that note again, but I internalize it. Through. Yeah, it's just something about writing it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm waiting on that notebook. I'm going to pray on it, help make sure she, you know... <laughs> Confirms it in your you heard it, you heard it, Okay. <laughs> did, did you hear me? <laughs> Get that confirmation going. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's huge for sure. Yeah. Awesome. And I do have um so for Mother's Day, I have like a limited edition little bundle that's coming out soon. Um, I'm not sure when this will air, but hopefully Mother's Day hasn't passed. But um, I have that coming out. And then I have some really dope designs for um, like the summertime. I'm super excited about like some really nice colors, like something different. Um, than what you guys have seen in the past. And um, you'll be seeing more of me. I've committed to coming from behind the camera yes. uh, and really connecting and engaging. And really during this time, people are thirsty for connection. And I've just, I've received like an overwhelming amount of like prayer requests to my DMs and my emails and people just wanting to hear um, from me to feel some sort of connection, um, you know, to God or whatever inspiration. So I, I know that it's necessary. And he's been telling me this for quite a while. Um, so yeah, you'll be seeing more of me also in the future. Looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Um, I would say, um, besides prayer, obviously, but I would say to just be gentle with myself, um, and allowing myself the space to learn and to know that I don't have to have it all figured out at every single moment. Um, we are our own worst critics and we put ourselves in these boxes. Like we want to do things outside of the box, but we're the first one to put ourselves in a box. Hello. And you know what I'm saying? And I think that that is the biggest thing that I have um, learned is just, it's okay. If you don't know it all, you will figure it out, you know, and as you grow your knowledge, your experience, will grow you know and that's it like be gentle be grace be gracious to yourself mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what final thoughts do you have for us as an audience well you know um look at the end of the day what's for you is for you um, whatever dream you may have whatever goals you may have whatever you feel like god has laid on your heart to do he will equip you to do it if you don't feel like you're qualified now, he will qualify you. He doesn't call those that are qualified. He qualifies the ones that he calls. Um, so guys, just stay motivated, stay inspired. Um, and if you need help, reach out. There's so many people who struggle or suffer in silence because they're afraid to ask people or whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Just, um, just stay steadfast and stay faithful, and he will show you what he can do. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us today. You dropped a bunch of gems. Where can people find you if they want to learn more? Uh, well, currently, you can find me in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Fashion in Favor. Um, and then you can also shop the website at www.fashionandfavor.com. If you join our mailing list and become an official member of the Fave Nation, you will receive a coupon for 15% off your first purchase. Um, yeah, and that's that. Awesome. Actually, you know what? One thing I just that just hit me just now, if I can say, if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. One of the other things, too, that really helps to keep me motivated is understanding that this is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about what I want to do or what I feel like doing. When you, when your why is outside of you, it will allow you to continue to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving. So if you find yourself feeling stuck or you find yourself feeling like you don't know where to go, figure out why you started this. 
mm-hmm. why you are doing what you're doing in the first place. And nine times out of 10, it don't have anything to do with you. It has to do with somebody else. And you know that you not doing it, you're letting down however many people, you know what I mean? So somebody's, somebody's uh, motivation, somebody's inspiration, somebody's faith, somebody's happiness, somebody's joy for the day is depending on the gift that you have. So remember that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh, just drop it right there. No, I, that was, I, it was yeah. <laughs> that was good. No, and it's so true because a lot of times we get so discouraged, um, especially when you're starting off in business and you're like, yeah. no one cares who's gonna buy my products, who's even on my Insta. You know, like you start to feel that, not recognizing like there are plenty of people who are watching who need that and who are counting on that. And one thing that's helped me get through that. Um, it is the perspective that if I only help one person, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. And yep. literally, I remember my first conf- uh, my first loving me workshop. Um, literally, I put it together in like a month and put it together because I felt God tell me like you need to do a conference this summer, and so it happened. Um, and I remember fe- like, and I genuinely felt like if one person shows up. I've done what I was supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. really have. Um, and outside of family, one person showed up and I was genuinely happy. good. Like good. I was so happy. And then you fast forward to 2020. So we're working on our fourth annual Loving Me conference. Um, it's gotten bigger, it's gotten better, but it's it's always been based on God's will. Mm-hmm like even moving the conference to Charlotte and some of the things that are coming next in 2021 and, you know, just all these other things, like it's been at the will of God. Yeah. And understanding that he'll connect you with who you need to be connected to. Mm -hmm. But don't give up because one person showed up. Mm -hmm. That one person is a seed. Yeah. And like also too, like sometimes people pray for these gargantuan outcomes and all of these people but like are you really prepared to handle all of these people you know what i mean so one person he's like okay let me see if she can take care of that one person okay you took care of this one thing if you um keep faith in one thing i'll make you ruler over many okay so now each time you're showing him that you're able to handle what he's giving you you know so sometimes people need to understand that also like understand where you are and god knows where you are you saying and you praying but he like she ain't ready for that and that's okay right. because he knows you better than you know yourself. Exactly. So you, you do this and then you do that. You know what I mean? Your steps are ordered. So, so keep Absolutely. going. For sure. And even with that same example, um, Loving Me 2019 was the first year in Charlotte. It was the first three-day weekend. So it used to be a couple hours. Now it's a three-day weekend. Mm. Um, it was the first time we had vendors. We, the first time we went from three speakers to 20 speakers. Mm-hmm. Like, it, And I'm going to be honest with you. I was literally like... I'm going to do this. And I only did it because I knew it was what God was telling me to do. But had I tried that year one, child. It wouldn't have been no, it wouldn't be no year four. It wouldn't be no year four. Hello. Thank God for Um, that. And you just learn and grow with each level, but do not despise small beginnings. Mm -hmm. That's your, that's your chance to figure out the details. Yep. Yes. Yes. So thank you so much for being a part of our podcast tonight. I've had such a great conversation. Yeah, me too. You made me so comfortable. Yeah, I'm glad. That's the goal. (laughs) For sure. Well, thank you again for um, sharing your wisdom with our audience. I'm sure they've learned a lot as well. And make sure y'all check out her her product show, okay? Can can we get a glimpse of the shirt real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show y'all. So this one is uh, one that says, uh, hella black, hella blessed, hella proud okay Uh, yeah so you know the designs they definitely are you know for the culture but definitely and right in line each each design is inspired by some of my personal favorite scriptures um Mm -hmm. to inspire people to get back to the word like oh where'd that come from right there you go (laughs) (laughs) well make sure y'all support black owned businesses okay y'all yes